morning. It is the 23rd of April, and we are continuing to look at uh, the topic of temptation and fighting spiritual battles. And uh, in this third lesson, I want to take you to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. And a lot of times uh, there's uh, an overemphasis of the devil, uh, such as, you know, the old adage, the devil made me do it. Um, and then at times there's an underestimation of the powers uh, that the devil has. And so today I want to uh, dive into this without getting too uh, detailed on things that make many people uncomfortable, true things uh, about Satan and his minions and the control and power and influence that they have. Uh, we must never underestimate that. But I think looking at this from a very practical standpoint, understand the spiritual battles we face are with the enemy. And Satan is real, and he has a great deal of influence uh, on this world because the scripture says he's the God of this world, uh, not to be equaled or greater than our God, uh, but there is a difference. And so let me take you to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Great words, great encouragement, and uh, trust that this will be helpful to you today. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And uh, if you were uh, like me growing up and I watched uh, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom uh, or maybe Jack Hanna or some other animal show, we understand the ferocious strength and ability of the devil or excuse me, of the lion. And uh, the comparison there is real. Uh, but the lion, and we get a little bit of misunderstanding from this passage because in the order in which we read it, but it talks about uh, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh, but if you've seen those videos of the lion stalking prey, uh, looking to destroy the prey, something to eat. Uh, they don't roar. Uh, they are uh, patient. They are quiet. They are prowling. Uh, everything about them is to sneak up on and attack without warning, no roaring, uh, the enemy. And that is the picture that the scriptures are giving us about Satan. Uh, he will patiently wait for the right moment to attack. Uh, he will not give a warning. There is no roar in what he does. And so the understanding of our spiritual battles begins with understanding the enemy. And so, like I said earlier, our culture at times gives unhealthy recognition to Satan. At other times, uh, there is this... Uh, almost ignorance or ignoring uh, the truth that there is an enemy called Satan and he wants to destroy your life. C.S. Lewis, uh, famous pastor, author, uh, many things have been written about him and transferred into story form and movie form, but he wrote the Screwtape Letters. And I want to read this to you because in here he gives description that I think would be helpful. Here's what he says. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to believe in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They themselves are equally pleased by both errors and hail the materialistic or magician with the same delight. So in this lesson, we'll study uh, the, the truth about 2 Corinthians 2.11 uh, understanding that we cannot be ignorant of Satan's devices. You know, there's 26 different books in the Bible, uh, most of them in the New Testament, but describing Satan and his personality. Uh, he is a real individual, a real person, a creation of God. And he is a fallen angel, as you remember. Uh, but there's passages that deal with his intellect. Satan has intellect. Uh, there's passages such as Luke 22 and 1 Timothy 3 that describe the emotion 
that comes with uh, Satan. Uh, and then many other passages that address the issue of the will he has and ultimately the actions. And so uh, many times we think of Satan only as in the actions, the attack, the, the enemy that he is, uh, without thinking that he has intellect. He strategizes to attack the will, the determination that he has to overthrow us or to tempt us. And so uh, one description of his goal is this, the overall goal of Satan and his minions is to oppose God and to thwart his purposes. Well, there's an understanding for you and I. We are here to carry out the purpose of God. And the enemy, Satan, may not be necessarily interested in me as an individual, but me as an individual who have been commissioned by God to carry out his work, we are a direct threat to Satan. And so he is going to attack that and try to destroy what he can. And so uh, going back to understanding that verse that you and I be sober, stay awake, be alert. Because why? Your adversary, the devil, just like a lion, is seeking whom he may devour. And for the cause of Christ and the will of God and the plan that God has, uh, you and I have been commissioned. Uh, salvation is not about just going to heaven. It's about carrying out the work and will of God here and now. And if we're not careful, the spiritual battles that we face uh, will not only cause damage to us, to our testimony, but ultimately to the plans of God. And I think uh, if you and I have our priorities right, our purpose for God, the reason we're here, the reason why we exist is to carry out his will. That's first and foremost. And so let me encourage you on this day, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, like we talked about last time. And today, be sober, be vigilant, because why? There is an enemy who wants to thwart the purpose of God by attacking your life. And so be strong in the Lord today. Go in his might. Have a good day.